there, fix that car here with a 10 point guide to buying a used car. Now the place to start is online. It may be that you've seen the car in a forecourt or it's a friend's car, but you can see a few things online. If it's on a forecourt, find the advert for it. It may be an auto trader on one of the listings, or it may be on Gumtree, or it may be on both. Now the critical information you can find out here is how many miles a car has covered. You can look at pictures, look for bodywork damage, which you, you will not want. And um, you can generally see the registration number in the pictures, which you can then use to look up the MOT history of the car. Now that is well worth doing. In terms of mileage, I wouldn't buy a car with more than 80,000 miles on it. And the reason for that is that most cars will last maybe 120,000, 150,000 miles. But even at 100,000 miles, they'll start to have problems. Clutches will go wrong. There'll be things that are beyond the normal service items in the car that start to go wrong. So if you buy it at a maximum mileage of 80,000 miles, you stand a good chance of getting 20, maybe 30,000 miles out of a car without too much trouble. If you're buying a newer car, reduce that mileage to about 50,000. That does exclude the majority of cars in the second-hand car market but uh, it will save you an awful lot of hassle later on. And really looking for a second-hand car is all about excluding cars for various reasons. Now let's go on to uh, look at what we can find on the DVLA site around MOTs. Now here's an example. It is actually an older car, but uh, we can see that this particular MOT search shows that the car has had an oil leak. That's quite bad. It, might, it may be expensive to repair, it may be that the oil has been run very low and some damage has been done to the engine. So immediately the cautionary bells are ringing. Another item to look out for uh, along these MOT sites are maybe an MOT tester has noticed some corrosion. Corrosion will show before it's a problem. So maybe a year, two years out, an MOT tester may comment on corrosion underneath the car and you wouldn't want to go near one of those. When you've chosen a car and go to see it, start with a very close external inspection. First of all, it's a car sitting evenly on all four wheels. You can check this by looking at the gap above the, the wheels. If it's low on one wheel, that might indicate a broken spring. Look at each panel. Look at the, uh, the light units. And critically, look along the car. Yeah, and you're looking for a panel that's out of alignment, one that isn't following the body line of the car, or variations in paint that would indicate that uh, there's been a repair to the car and uh, it might not be quite what uh, you imagined. Look at the headlight units. Look at the seam gaps. Are they all even and regular? Also, check the windscreen. Has it got any scratches or has it got some chips that might be spreading? Check all lights. Check all wheels. And on this particular car, looking at this door, there is a problem. By coming close, you can just about see some scratch marks here. And looking down the bottom, there's been a repair to the sill. There's been filler put in there and it's been uh, overpainted. If I go to the back of the car and look down, it doesn't look significant. Coming back to the door, the damage is quite obvious. That may not seem much to you. The cost of repairs here is estimated to be at £720. So a significant impact on the value of this particular vehicle as a second-hand car. Next, check the interior. First thing to do when you step inside the vehicle is take a deep breath through your nose. Do you smell anything? Can you smell dampness? Can you smell smoke? Can you smell that animals have been in the car? All of these can be significant problems. Look at the condition of the interior. Look at the condition of the seats. Then lift the mats. And what you're looking for is dampness. Any dampness could indicate rainwater's getting into the car, which uh, will be a, could be quite a problem to you. Check the boot. Look for a spare wheel. Is that all there? Is the tool kit there? And again, look for dampness under the spare wheel. 
and don't forget the headlining you can get fingerprints up there and it's a, a great place to show any signs of uh, tobacco smoke finally take a look at the steering wheel is it worn is the driver's seat worn generally it's only high mileage cars that have a worn steering wheel or, or a worn seat so it may be an indication that the cars cover more mileage than is shown on its records underneath the bonnet just take a look at the wiring is it tidy make sure nothing's hanging nothing's been interfered with if connectors have been pulled off and put back on that could well indicate there's a, an underlying fault or there could be a fault that's going to develop because the connector has been taken apart too many times look for oil leaks typically down here in fact anywhere around the, uh, the cylinder head and look for evidence of, of water leaks and you'll see white staining if you have any of that this this particular engine is is clear remove the oil filler cap and take a look underneath and inside there shouldn't be any foaming at all this is clear this indicates a good head gasket but if there's any foaming the the head gasket is is in question also take a look in the expansion tank put your finger in and make sure the, the the coolant comes back relatively clean again you're looking for any cross contamination with the oil that that all looks clear and take the dipstick out to have a look at the oil in doing this here we can see the oil it's pretty dirty actually the the oil needs replacing but there is no foaming so that uh, again checks off as okay take a look under the engine now to do this you'll probably need a torch and at this point the vendor may become slightly concerned but just don't worry you know it's something you need to do look for oil leaks here there is some evidence of a an oil leak at this end of the uh, uh, the sump so that's a, a point against this car take a very close look at the junction between the bell housing and the engine if there's any leakage here it's it's walk away immediately that means either a clutch slave cylinder or an oil leak within the the, the clutch area have a look around the gearbox have a look where the drive shafts go into the gearbox again you're looking for oil leaks and take a look at the the CV joints are they clean free from grease you can take a look underneath this can be difficult again if you have a torch that, that'll help if you can't a critical area to look at is the very back of the sill where it meets the front of the rear wheels put your fingers around behind onto the inner sill and press hard if you feel any softness any loose rust uh, walk away but uh, this should feel firm solid and you shouldn't have any flaking rust come away in your fingers this is one of the most vulnerable points on on any car and also take a look around the rear wheel arch put your fingers in behind and again you're feeling for rust where the the body panel meets the rear wheel arch back inside the car it's almost time to start the engine make sure the windows open so you can hear noises from outside and what you're principally listening for are a scraping noise which could be a bearing a screeching noise which might be a, a belt as the engine starts and any tapping noises and as you go through the starting process turn the ignition key on to bring all the lights up first you need to make sure all of these lights come on and you'll hear a little whoosh noise so uh, just pause for a moment as you, as, as you do that then crank and you expect an immediate start which we, we have here all these lights should uh, pretty much go out apart from the handbrake light uh, now you have the engine running this sounds good I can't hear screeching I can't hear tapping and I can't hear any any scraping noises I'm going to touch the clutch very lightly so I'll just touch it there while the car's in neutral what I'm listening for here is a uh, just, a, just a, a little screeching noise perhaps as the clutch release bearing comes into contact with the, the the clutch spring you shouldn't hear anything at all I'm pressing this clutch all the way down and I hear nothing the next thing to do is engage first gear make sure the handbrake is on very tight and increase the revs and bring the clutch up it shouldn't be possible to get the clutch up without uh, stalling the engine so you're doing a test there to make sure that you haven't got clutch slippage step outside and have a look at the exhaust this is absolutely clear any blue smoke indicates 
oil being burnt, any black smoke indicates the mixture is wrong. There are a few drips coming out there, they're just water, that's fine and perfectly normal. Now it's time to take the car for a test drive. We're going to look for some speed bumps, listen out for squeaks, groans, any untoward noises as we go over those speed bumps and we're going to need to take the car up to speed because we're looking for vibration and uh, any any steering uh, abnormalities. First of all, put the car on full lock and here we're listening for a clicking noise. We haven't got one here, that's the CV boot, it's okay. Then over the first speed bump, that actually sounds okay, there was just a, a rebounding, there was no banging noise, no groaning noise or, or anything untoward there. Take the car up to a, a higher speed, I'm getting up to about 30 miles an hour here, but look for a vibration on the steering, this is, this is rock solid. You really need to take the car up to 60-70 miles an hour on a, a dual carriageway and also uh, look out for vibrations. Any shaking of the car at that speed would indicate a worn shock absorber and any vibration on the steering would indicate something that uh, isn't quite right within the steering. All of these things need to be avoided because they're very expensive to put right. Also make sure the car changes gear smoothly in and out of every gear. The gear to pay particular attention to is second gear because uh, that tends to be the first to, to wear on a gearbox. Check over all the buttons and controls on the car. Wipers, headlights, indicators, everything you can think of, all the different little buttons around the car. Each of these items are simple but uh, can be very expensive to put right if not working correctly. So what have we achieved? On this car we've checked through the MOT history of the car, we've checked the exterior and interior condition of the car, we've checked over basic engine mechanics, we've taken particular attention or close focus to the clutch to make sure the clutch is working okay and we've looked under the bonnet to look for leaks and uh, anything there that, that might be expensive to put right. Then we've taken the car for a test drive and we've checked out the suspension. This car passes everything apart from a slight oil leak from the uh, uh, far end of the engine sub which needs to be looked at a little bit closer. I haven't checked out the tyres, I haven't looked at brakes and I haven't looked at how much wear is left on the brakes and that's actually because I'm not that bothered about those. To me they're normal service items and if you're going to buy a car that uh, you want to keep for a few years they are things that you're likely to uh, want to do quite early so that you don't need to come back to them. In fact what I do with second hand cars is I tend to freshen up the brakes and any tyres that need sorting out straight away so that I don't need to think about those items for many months to come. I hope this has been useful and uh, will help you avoiding pitfalls as you go looking for your own second hand car. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.